Hi there, and welcome back to the channel for some more Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And after yesterday's video where I talked about what was going on on all of the outposts around the system, today I think it's time to have a look at what's been going on in the space station and, and some of the advances we've made over here, because uh, it's not all been tidying up and fixing up things that haven't been working properly. The first thing we needed to sort out was this train here, which had been got stuck at the station at the other end because we hadn't uh, eliminated, we hadn't um, blocked off this row across here. And so that meant it was never filling up with the advanced science packs because there weren't any. And so it wasn't able to come over here and drop them off. And so we've moved, we've sorted that out by uh, eliminating this row and also by then telling it over here that we don't need, we don't expect it to be bringing any of those over anymore. So we've removed the entry for the, uh, for the advanced science pack. And that's another thing that's happened uh, from the update because we used to be making the advanced science on the bus and for sending it along here when it was back back when it was reasonably simple. Now it's got a bit more complicated, so we're making it up here in the area that Tristan's been building, and that's now working quite nicely. We've got so we've got the train, we've got the train working. It's bringing the science packs over, and I believe. Well, I want to say we're doing we're uh, researching our way merrily, but we appear not to be. What have we run out of? Let's have a quick look. We haven't got any of those, but that's fine. Well, we've run out of matter science one apparently, so that's going to be another one to uh, another one to fix next time. So we'll have a have, have a actually let's have a look into that now and see why that stopped. Matter science comes from all the way up here, and we've got these various two different sizes of buildings making the matter science one and matter science two. And over here we have we've run out of scrap. That's a ridiculous thing to have run out of. Okay, that's so interesting. That's interesting because this train, the train that pulls in here, is supposed to unload enough scrap when it comes over in order to make in order to make science packs out of all of the um, uh, catalogs it's brought over with it. So something's going a bit wrong here. This this is a bit strange. Uh, we're going to have to take a look into that. Let's see if we can. Uh, so maybe my guess at this point is that when we started doing matter 2 we didn't increase the amount of scrap it was bringing over and so we've run out let's see if we can find the train and see what it get what it's up to so the train over here has filled up to well it fills up to 200 of each type of catalog and then 2000 of the scrap so there's a, so that means there's 400 catalogs which means there is therefore five scrap available for each um, each catalog if we look in the recipes we can see that this one takes 10 scrap for each one matter catalog that comes in and number two also takes 10 scrap for each matter catalogue that comes in. So it looks like we need to have twice as much scrap being brought over and that's the problem, that's why it's ground to a halt. However, it probably wouldn't be a problem because we could just have the train travel back and forth a bit more often. Um, however, over here we aren't making matter catalogue one at the moment. Uh, and so this isn't filling up with matter catalog one, so the train hasn't quite filled up, and therefore it's not leaving. And why is that a problem? Are you matter catalog one? Yes, you are. You are, and you are missing the, uh, the matter liberation data. Okay, so we've ripped through probably ripped through so much matter liberation data down here, making the uh, making the, making the particle stream that somewhere up here there is a uh, we, we we we're not somewhere up here we we've ripped through it all, and there is a shortage of it because we don't have any radiation bit data being brought in. That presumably comes in. Oh, hang on, we've got ready. No, we've got too much, um, too much uh, contaminated scrap that we can't, and other stuff that we can't get rid of. So this is jammed up because this belt is full. What's going on here? Okay, these these two belts are, but yeah, this is all jammed up along here. We're not getting rid of the scrap. So presumably, the scrap disposal system is jammed up somewhere, and that's what's causing the problem. Yeah, this is all jammed, jammed all the way around down here. Um, the Clean scrap disposal seems to be absolutely fine, but the contaminated scrap has backed up all the way along the belt from down here where it's processed because we have... Apparently we have an excess of um, contaminated biosludge. Ah, so yes, this machine down here. We have one machine that's supposed to be dealing with it. Um, but we've now got... We're full of biosludge. So these tanks are filled up completely and therefore the whole system has ground to a halt because we can't get rid of the, uh, the, the cleaned up biosludge. That's all supposed to be being taken up by a train and disappearing into the... Um, up here to go into... Is it these ones? Yes, biosludge to go into, here, into these tanks. But these tanks are completely full. So... It sort of seems to come down to we're not doing um, biological science fast enough, or we're not doing biological stuff fast enough, and so that means we've we've clogged up on the on the bio sludge up here, uh, and we can't do anything with it. I, I suppose as a short term fix, I could take the limiter off this pump, but if we fill these up, then any bio sludge that overflows from over on this side isn't going to be able to make its way into these tanks. We could put in an additional tank. Well, not here because it would join onto this pipe. But we could put additional storage in over here. But I don't really like that idea. I'm not. I'm not convinced it would work particularly well. Yeah, we're going to need to find a way to de to get rid of some of this bio sludge. And apparently, just sinking it all into bioscience isn't working very well at the moment. So uh, that's a problem. I'm hoping over here we are trying basically trying not to make it. So we're we're feeding it through here if this if this tank is less than 50% full, which it currently 
is. Does that so? Does that mean looking down here again? These tanks are a half half full. This should not be set. If it's less than ten thousand, right? This needs to be a sink. So this should be. Um, there should be one hundred and fifty thousand here, like that. So we use up the uh, the bio sludge from here as a priority, rather than using the bio sludge that we're making. Oh, hang on, is this? Yeah, this is just straight up making bio sludge, isn't it? This isn't doing anything else. This isn't doing anything useful apart from making bio sludge, which we you know we need a bit of it. But that should be the low priority input. This should be the high priority input coming out of this train system here. So we can pull all that out. We can slurp it through here, fill fill these tanks up, and then sooner or later this well. Eventually, this, this this train will empty, and then it'll come back down here. It'll pick up some of this bio sludge, take it away, and then we'll be able to start churning through, cleaning up some of this contaminated scrap. And then, maybe, then we can start processing through all of this scrap and junk that's just been filling up, clogging up the entire disposal system up here. So, oh, I'm um, I'm quite pleased I spotted that, or, or um, w w found found that problem, worked back through it, because yeah, that's a that's a serious issue. There we go. The train is now empty, so that can now well, it's going to take the long long way round. We'll give it a moment to come down here and pick some pick some of the the uh, the goop up from down down the bottom. Here it comes. So that'll pull in here like that. We'll, f we'll very very quickly fill that up with um, 100,000, no sorry, 60,000 of the uh, the bio sludge out of these tanks. That means this machine can start to run again, which means hopefully we'll, we can then start to clean up this contaminated bio sludge. I don't know whether this machine is going to be fast enough to keep up with the uh, the sudden in influx that we're going to see here, um, but it's at, le it's at least taking some of the pressure out of the uh, out of the pipes here uh, and allowing all of these machines to just start running again so we can start cleaning out some of this contaminated scrap which is going to pull all that through we're going to have a sud a massive flood of these memory cards coming through to be recycled and reused uh, we're going to have an absolute flood of their of the uh, junk data cards coming through as well and as you can see this is now allowing the allowing the system up here to start running a little bit uh, it's not going quite flat out yet but I think this is this is now going to allow it to disenclog and uh, and start and start pulling everything through so that's going to need to be done in the in the real game as well, and I'll and run the idea past Mark just to make sure he doesn't think that there's a reason why we shouldn't be doing it like this. Uh, it is entirely possible that I've I fixed it in a, in a in a bad way, TM. Um, but I, I don't think I have. This isn't this isn't this hasn't started really running yet. We're not pulling. Oh, okay. There's there's so many splitters along here that that one down at the bottom is a very very low priority. But as we start to pull everything out of all of the belts up here, eventually the system will start to run again. Uh, you can see there's so many of so many of these uh, junk data cards in here from all of the other all the other types of science that are being done. And even up at the, right up at the top here, that belt is only running 50% of the time anyway to get some of this through. But you know, it, it, it it's a good start. We'll get we'll get we'll get the system declogged, and eventually that will hopefully allow us to pull some of the junk through from wherever it was that we're making the radiation data, and then get all of the things that are working that I've been talking about. Yes, fingers are indeed crossed at this point. We shall have to, but that hopefully that will fix it. It'll get things working again. So where was I before I started talking about that? Oh yes, it was science packs. Yes, I noticed over here that yes, we'd, we'd run out of the um, out of the matter science packs, and that's and and, and that's why. So we can I mean, we can do a temporary fix on that by just coming over here and giving this train a boop and telling it to go over and you know go over to the matter catalog drop drop off some of your scrap. That's fine. We should probably reduce the number of each type of card that we're taking in here as well. Only have a hundred of each, so that we have the, so we have a balanced quantity of um, scrap and and catalogs to go in the train. But that is slightly less important because it will work as it is so further on the um, on the on the uh, science packs we noticed that we're running very very short of the uh, the advanced science packs so th those were still a bit of a problem and so Tristan has sped that up he's quintupled the speed of it apparently by uh, doubling the number of machines here and then shoving them full of speed modules like this so that should now I imagine that is now going to be enough. We're going to produce these um, these science packs a bit quicker. They're going to be able to, going to be able to run through here and keep and keep the labs happy. But you know, until we get the matter ones up and running, we're not going to be absolutely certain about that. But it seems it seems like quintupling the speed that they're produced at should be enough. Uh, and we noticed that the the machines along here these were easily capable of keeping up. So the question is is mostly going to be down to whether the inputs. So that's these ones over here and the things that are being made elsewhere are going to be able to keep up. And so far, so good, but you know, there's a lot of stuff to get rid of, and as you can see along here, there's a huge number of cards jamming up the belts here that we're all trying to get rid of, so there's a, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be recycled, but we'll come back to that another time. Last week, I talked quite a lot about the new particle stream production system and how, and how it meant that this old one over here was now not required and therefore shouldn't be kicking in. 
that's unfortunately not quite true. So, um, well, it's, it's not needed, but it was still kicking in. So the problem was uh, that the, the particle stream is being produced at the moment down here with the new cheap recipe and also up here with the old expensive recipe. And, I, and then I thought, okay, it's needed around here. We're using a bit of particle stream here. We're using a bit over here. So that'll be fine. We can just, because these are all closer to this station than this one. So the train will come down here. It'll pick up the particle stream from, no, it's from up here somewhere, I think. And then it'll take it to over here, over into the deep space science. That'll be fine. However, it turns out we're actually using quite a lot of particle stream in other places. So some of it is being used for the astro science, so it means it's coming to here. And as you can see, that is much closer to this station than it is to this one, at least as the train flies. So a train that's dropped off here will then go to this station in order to pick up more particle stream before it goes off to wherever. And so that's bad. And there was another one. There are more particle streams over here. I think it was the material science, so somewhere up here there is a, a particle stream drop-off station as well. There it is, as well. So we need the particle stream over this, over up here as well, and that is obviously much, much closer to this station than it is to this station. And so the train was going to the wrong place. So I fixed this in a rather sort of dirty, hacky way. And if I select this train, you'll see, you'll see what that is. So firstly, it goes to the particle stream pickup down here. This is the new one, the one that, the one that was making it in the cheap recipe, the one that is a sixth of the price of the older, more expensive recipe. So it'll pick it up from there, and it'll fill it up. Then it'll go to particle stream low priority, which is the one over here, the older one, the, the expensive one, and try and fill up from there as well. So at that point, it shouldn't do anything. So it should fill up here, go to here, it'll, be, it'll already be full, so it won't fill up anymore. Then it'll go to a drop off, but then it'll go back over to here and fill up and so on. And so this means that as long as it keeps running around that loop, it's never going to pick any up from here. So why, you say, do I have this station in here at all? That's because this station over here will deactivate itself whenever the tanks run low. So if, we're getting, if, we, if we get below 100,000 in these tanks, then this station will be deactivated. A train won't come to here. And so, and so instead, it'll go, to the, it'll go to the low priority, the old, more expensive system. So as long as we're producing it fast enough over here, the trains will always come to this station, will always fill up here, and then we'll head off to take it to wherever uh, via the other station. But if this station is emptied, then the trains will go straight to the old station, fill up there, and go off to wherever it's needed. So that means that if we have a really, really high demand for it, then we'll start filling up from over here. But as long as demand is reasonably low and sensible, we'll always go to the uh, the cheaper one and, 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 and always fill up from there. So that should work nicely. It's a bit messy because it does mean that the trains have an extra stop over here, which means if they're going to deep space science, they'll go from here, they'll head over this way to, to check whether they can fill up or not, and then all the way back over here again. So it's not ideal, but it is better than, than having the trains pick up from over there, and it seemed easier than um, than doing things in the more complicated way. Now, what I, it's occurred to me what I could do is I could have a signal going from here that says, as long as these tanks are greater than 100,000, then over here, don't have this, then, then this station should be deactivated. So deactivate this station if this station is full. And now I've said it, I quite like that idea, so I think I might do that. I'll send a signal round from here to these ones and turn this station off, and that will mean the train won't go round that way if there's still plenty over here, but it will still be able to go over here if there's an actual shortage of it. I think that's going to work. I need to think through the details of that a little bit, but I think it should be okay. So we'll implement that in the, uh, in the next stream. <laughs> And the good news is, in the time I was talking about that, the, um, this, this pipe here has gone down to less than a third full. So it looks like one machine cleaning out the contaminated scrap is, is plenty. It's absolutely sufficient. And over here we are down to um, 120,000 in each. So they're down to about 60% full. Uh, so that's, good. That's, going, that's going very nicely. The, um, there's still a, a big backlog of stuff that needs to be cleared out and cleaned up and so on. But we are working through it and I think things are now probably going better. And so let's have a look down here again. This is the, the worst point of the whole thing. Yeah, still, still a bit, bit, still a bit clogged up. We're, it's going to take a bit longer than that to clean everything out, but things are going in the right direction, and we can still see a little bit of the stuff coming out of the um, the bacon science machine over here. So yeah, we've got a few of these cards coming through. It's not fantastic yet. We've still got quite a lot of we've still got a lot of scrap to churn through before this is all properly cleaned out, but things are looking a lot better. Over in Deep Space Science, I've put in a buffering system for the antimatter. So we have the, the antimatter is being produced here, it comes down this pipe, goes into this tank, which currently is completely full, well, virtually full, so that's great. We then, it's then being pumped downwards all the time to keep up the pressure on this pipe, which means that as we require any of these antimatter canisters down here for going off and making more arcosphere collectors, there should be lots of them available, so that should work really nicely. And then up here, we have this pump connected in with, with the, the red cable there, and that's telling this pump to only run when there's more than 20,000 in, the, uh, in the tank there, meaning that this will only pull through to go and load up the train system when this is basically full. 
Then over here, we've got this pump only pumping in when there's less than 80,000. So we're keeping this at 80,000 because we don't want to store a huge amount of antimatter here because it is fairly expensive. Although that said, we're not making it at the moment. So maybe it's not that, maybe it's not that much of a problem. And then we can, but, then, but it does mean we can always fill up a train here. So we, we should be, this should keep the prioritization about right, I think, for given what we want at the moment. Um, so this seems to be working quite nicely. Deep Space Science One was really struggling. We couldn't get the we couldn't get the the, the the level of throughput we needed for this one. So we fixed. So we've, we've helped that by upgrading this belt through here to a deep space belt, and that means we're getting twice the throughput of the of the Naquium plates. And that was because that was the thing we had a shortage of. If we have a look in these machines here, you can see that in, in order to make the um, the Deep Space Science packs, we need ten Naquium plates for each build. And so we had we just didn't have enough throughput coming through here when this was a when this was a normal space belt. A half belt wasn't enough. But having upgraded it to now to a deep space belt that means it's twice as fast so that that is now sufficient and it means we can we've got this this loader here coming out when, when it's running full speed this loader because this has loads both sides of the belt and then goes on to a deep space belt here that means we're getting enough pouring through to keep this belt completely full and that it turns out is now enough to keep all of these running so we did that and then very quickly discovered that we didn't have enough um, throughput on the output belt because there's also quite a lot of stuff comes out of it. So as you can see down there at the bottom, uh, each time this builds, it produces three different types of thing. So it produces the science pack, the junk data cards and broken data and broken data cards. Whereas down here, if we look at another earlier science, this is only producing two types of Thing. We're only producing the science packs and the junk data cards, and that means when you stick uh, stack inserters, or even I mean, even a fast inserter is still a sort of a stack inserter. They can unload a bit more quickly than the than than, uh, than can, can be done up here because they can because an inserter can only hold one type of thing at a time. So the other ones it would take two swings to empty. These ones would take three. So I replaced them with loaders, which means that we can then get the uh, the output can come through can flow through a lot faster because you can just have a steady stream of stuff coming out onto the belt. That did mean, though, that we then had to unload onto the near side of the belt, which is why I've got this extra loop here to make sure it's put onto the top side of the belt. And I've upgraded to deep space belts because we found that with the sheer amount of stuff that was coming through, on a single side of the belt, that the, uh, the belts weren't fast enough. However, that has now backed up fully, as you can see here. The system is, is working, and so we, we've got plenty at the moment, so we don't need to worry quite so much about the throughput. But I'm sure once we start doing difficult researches again in the future, we'll start to see a higher throughput there as well. I also noticed that Mike has started taking in quite a lot of the significant data in order to make his um, do his Arcosphere um, recipes up here, and I mean that's not a problem as well. It is a problem. It's not, it, I'm not saying he's done anything wrong because yes, we need all of that. We do need all of these cards. However, it caused a problem in that we are now getting through the uh, significant data much faster than before. That was also to, um, increased by the fact that we're now doing so many more different types of science all the way down here, and all of those chew through massive quantities of the significant data. And so, in order to fix that, well, um, I've put in some. I've upgraded some computers down here. Basically, uh, these are now all. I've tried to upgrade them all to um, to tier three supercomputers instead of tier two, which means they run that bit faster. This one still hasn't been upgraded. These ones still need some speed modules. But basically, we're we're moving in the right direction here. This is this this system is now much faster than it was before. Uh, you can see that it's still not. Oh no, it is, it is quite enough. Yes, the belt the belt has now filled up. So if we look at the graph of the significant data, you can see that for a long time it was being made at this sort of speed. This was about as fast as it went. I mean, yes, there were occasional peaks for one reason or another, I'm not sure why, but this was basically the speed it seemed to be able to make it at. Uh, and then after the upgrade, it was able to shoot all the way up to here, and that's meant we were able to make it much faster, and so that, so that has solved the problem, and we've now got a nice, healthy, happy backlog along here. However, in order to get that, I had to make Supercomputer Mark 3s. And so that was done up here. Now this was actually quite easy because I think pretty much everything I needed was already on the bus. So we, I needed the, what was it, is it the um, Holmium processors for this? Uh, so we needed superconductor cables, they were already there. Needed blue circuits, they were there, we seem to have run out of them, that's a bit of a problem. AI cores have been brought over fairly recently. I did need to do a little bit of uh, belt shenaniganry here to get them onto the onto the bus, but they were, already, they were already being brought over here on this belt, which is feeding them straight in here, but with a little bit of a, a splitter and a merge here, then I was able to get them onto the other side of this belt, so they were then available. Um, I did need to bring in the Supercomputer Mark IIs and I'm doing that by bots and I'm very sorry about that but the Supercomputer Mark IIs are probably being made about a mile down the uh, they're being made somewhere down here I don't even know where is it here is it this one yes it's here and I'm not going to run a belt of Supercomputer Mark IIs all the way up here maybe what I should have done is put the uh, the next machine in here and done it and, and done things around here but that didn't 
to be honest, that didn't seem particularly practical. Um, some, some of the things that need to be brought in are only available so far away that, yeah, I didn't really want to do that. So I've been lazy. I've used the I've used the, uh, the bots to bring them from this red chest to the blue chest up top. And that is now working. We are making we are making the, um, the, the supercomputer Mark 3s, except that we seem to have run out of blue circuits. So I guess that's going to be another thing to look into at some point. The next thing to report is that I spent a load of time messing around with the sulfur flow system in the in the spaceport over here because it wasn't working very well. We seem to be having trouble filling up the uh, the Talos and the uh, and the Stardust ships because Stardust gets through massive quantities of um, of sulfur, as you've seen. We're struggling to fill all that up, so we have two different types of source for sulfur. We have the ta ta the stuff that's brought in from Taras from making the the Imacite, and that all gets and we want to get rid of that because we've got it, it's it's br producing loads of it, and we want to make sure that we get rid of any excess just make sure it gets dealt with and used up as much as possible because we don't want it to overflow. However, it's not probably not going to produce enough to keep the entire system happy, so we need to bring more up from Norvis on the train like this, as you can see here. So that's getting brought up here, as you can see, it's being fed through. Uh, and so we need to, so, so the idea is that we want to use the, the Teresian uh, sulfur first and then use the Norvian sulfur if there's not enough Teresian. So we need to get those, those priorities set up. Then we need to send sulfur out to Talos and out to Stardust and probably one or two other places as well. Those absolutely need to have it. And then if there's any excess, then we want to send it to Agnea because Agnea can sink enormous quantities of sulfur in order to make the Vulcanite. However, it can also produce large quantities of it if it needs to because it's got oil, there's oil available out there. We're sending water out in the form of ice. It can produce its own sulfur. We don't need to ship it out. So it's just a convenient sink if we ever have too much from Taras. And so in order to get that working, well, previously I had a system where um, there, there was a tangle of belts. And what we're doing now is the, the sulfur from Taras is being brought out down here and then pr by priority is being sent off this way. So it can be sent over to uh, Talos and to Stardust. And then any any excess that isn't needed for that is being passed along this belt along here. Yes, it goes underneath there. That was an underground belt and through here. And then it goes underneath here and is fed into the back of this warehouse. And that means that if we start to fill this warehouse up, then we'll uh, then we stop asking for more sulfur from Norvis. We'll stop bringing that up. Um, and then it can all be passed out through along here. We've got it being fed out along this deep space belt here. And you'll notice once again, we've used two space loaders to feed one deep space belt because that, that those speeds match. And if you use a, a deep space splitter here, you can get them on there because we're still not making the deep space loaders because they're so expensive. And that then runs down here in order to load everything else up. And then over here, we have the overflow for Agnea. So this, as you remember, is the belt that comes from the Taras ship. And we've got a priority that will try and send it over here into these warehouses. But if they fill up, then as an overflow, it can pass it up here where it'll go into the Agnea ship and be disposed of by taking it to Agnea. So this system should work. It should keep all the priorities, the input high and low priority and the output priority and sync all balanced up and working nicely together. Uh, we haven't really stress tested it yet because we just straight up don't have enough sulfur. This train that's coming up here is not bringing enough of it up. Maybe we need another train. Maybe we need, I don't know what we need, but we need, it isn't working as it is. So we need, we need to find more sulfur somehow because we, we're just getting through so much on Stardust. But yeah, the, um, but this, 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 this prioritization system at least has started working quite nicely. Tristan noticed that junk data cards were backing up, uh, so he's upgraded these belts along here to deep space belts, so they uh, so they'll run faster, so they can they can format these data cards a bit more quickly. Um, that doesn't seem to be a problem anymore, so I guess that means the fix has worked. But uh, but it's slightly hard to tell because we're still trying to clear out all of that um, all that contaminated scrap we were seeing earlier. So it's it's hard to say, but it does look like it looks like it's working here, and I know there've been a lot of um, junk data cards that we've been trying to feed through, and there aren't any back there's no backup along here, so. I'm going to guess that it's worked quite well, so <laughs> well done there. There's also been expansions of the thermofluid production, or thermofluid chilling, sorry. Uh, so over here I doubled this at this area, and I think I possibly tripled up here. So we're now producing the, uh, the, the, the super chilled thermofluid at a really good rate. We've got, we've got the system is completely full along here. We're producing it far faster than we can make it. And while I was messing around with thermofluid, I replaced the uh, thermofluid system over in the science area as well. So I ripped out the old style thermofluid system here, dropped in a nice shiny new mark system, and that's working really well. So over here, you can see once again, we have we are we are full of thermofluid. Everything is everything has been chilled down nicely, exactly as we want it to. I did upset uh, Mike a little bit while I was doing this because while I was ripping that up, he was busy up the up at the top here trying to um, trying to set set all his um, his arcosphery stuff going. And some of this requires thermofluids in various places here and there, like like this one for example. And I cut the supply off, so I did apologise to him for that. But you know, it did mean that when I put this back in, we now have a reliable supply of thermofluid over here instead of the um, the rather old-fashioned and not very reliable one that we had before. 
over in the far west, if you can say west when you're up in space. Tristan's also Im improved the thermofluid production over here on a much, much smaller scale. Uh, but that does now mean he's got enough of it to keep these computers running here. And we've, as you can see, we've now got plenty of these data cards. This is backed up. This is backed up. Everything looks great for the advanced science. Down on the ground, Tristan has sorted out the prioritizations for the uh, for the matter production. So you remember last week I talked about how we have all of the ores coming in here. If we need them, we want them to flow straight through and go into the train system over here because we obviously we we're apparently we need quite a lot of iron ore because look another train has turned up to fill up with it. So we're pulling this through as fast as we can make it. So we're not turning iron into matter at the moment. The copper is, has got to the next step, the next level of that, where it's flow. Oh no, that's just started to flow as well. The uh, rare metals have got to the next stage of this, where this box isn't full, but we're not sending it straight over to the train, so we're currently trying to fill this box up. The stone, conveniently, is the next step up from that, where this box is now essentially practically full, and so we're then running it down here. Now at this point, we could the priority would be to send it through these belts down down here to be made into to go down here to be made into matter. However, we've got full tanks of matter now, so that means the stone is being turned into landfill and then being put into the uh, into the landfill matrons along here. We are gradually refilling these warehouses, but you know we don't seem to be using the matter up fast enough for that. The question is, should we be trying to turn some of the matter into some of the ores that we need? Somebody asked this in the comments fairly recently, and I'm, I'm not really sure, because it does, on the one hand, it feels a bit wasteful to be turning stone into just into loads and loads and loads of landfill. But on the other hand, is it worth turning is it worth turning the matter into into the other 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 things is it worth the extra logistics cost of taking the matter up to space to process it and and, and use up the matter stabilization cores in order to make in order to turn the matter into um into i don't know copper or rare metals or what raw rare metals or whatever else it turns out we need or would we be better off just going well i don't care we'll just consider this to be junk we'll carry on digging up copper from wherever we need it from and go, I don't care, it's not worth transferring stuff through matter. I'm not 100% sure. I think there's. I think I may need to go in and do the maths and work out how expensive it is. God, blimey, look, another train has come in to pick up the iron. I guess we do get through a lot of it. So that's why we, That's why we have the Oliran uh, iron planet system. So the question is, is it going to be worth going through the uh, turning matter into other things, or is it just going to be significantly more expensive than just, you know, going off to another planet and digging it up? That's something I think I'm going to need to think about the maths of that, and uh, so I won't just give you an answer now, because uh, it's going to be very much an it depends answer, so I'm going to need to put my arguments together. <laughs> Tristan has also started turning excess uranium into uh, into matter, and I have n I can't tell where that's happening. Is it, is it this belt? I I, I, I don't. Yes, it, it somewhere around here maybe. I have no idea, but somewhere he's going to be splitting any excess off and taking it down to be turned into matter. I'm I, I'm honestly not sure where. He, that hasn't been a problem yet because, as you can see, we 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 have a bit of a. I'm not going to call it a shortage of uranium because I don't think we've had any sort of alerts for it, but we we don't have we don't have a lot of it over here, so it's unlikely to be an issue. Oh, it's here. Here we go. This is this is an over flow that's going down here and across here to be made to turn the uranium into matter. Um, it's unlikely to be needed, but we've got the overflow in here just in case this, this system ever backs up for... goodness, I can't think why it ever would, but just in case it ever does, we're ready to deal with it. Maybe it'd be worth turning matter into uranium ore. Hmm, that's one to consider, I think. Mark has now finished setting up the uh, the new iron smelting facility over here. I, I talked about this a bit uh, last week, and and this is this is when we we noted that uh, Mark had used the wrong type of beacons. Uh, he's now fixed that, as you can see. These are now the what? God, the wide area beacons too, and they're full of. If that's, that's full of tier, speed tier sixes, isn't it? Jeez, that's going to be going fast. How, how how fast are these machines running? So these ones are now running at speed of fifty, which is more than six times their normal speed. That's that that that, that that's. Uh, and, and that's running at six times its normal speed, even with the slowdown from the from all the productivity modules in it. These ones up here are running at uh, nine, almost nine and a half times their normal speed. That's crazy. But I guess we have a decent supply of the tier six speed modules, so we, we might as well use them. Uh, and so yes, we can now make obscene amounts of iron incredibly quickly. I talked about the uh, the prioritization feeds over here. I'm not going to mention those again. Um, but I will say that look over here. We've now got the, the system, system is up and working. We've got a nice shiny. Um, Blue belt, yes, blue belts of steel ingots and iron ingots coming out here, flowing down to go into the uh, into the stations where they can, so we can load up the trains. There was a system over here that was turning the um, the ingots into oh, that can turn ingots into plates should that be needed. So a, a train that requires plates can come in here, it can grab them, and we bring oh I see we bring the ingots over as by train and then turning them into plates. So that's fine. We can keep we can we can use these systems if we do ever actually need any um any 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 plated metals, but we don't in, in general we don't. But it's sort of nice to have the system available just in case, I think.
So yeah, we've got the uh, got the availability there to produce those. As an important part of the uh, the upgrade here, he has now also removed the old um, iron smeltery that was in this space over here. That's now gone completely because this one is going to be ludicrously faster. And if we look at the production graph for that over the last 10 hours, well, you can see that this the new one seems to peak at uh, 2.3 thousand iron ingots per minute. And the old one, well, it wibbled up and down merrily, but I, uh, it, it's kind of hard to tell what it peaked at um, because it's there, there's, 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 there aren't any flat tops on, it, on, on the graph anywhere around here. But it does seem to have run, fairly commonly been running at either 1 or maybe 1.4 thousand per minute. So this is a lot faster, a lot smaller, and probably going to be a lot more productive because it's, got a lot, it's going to have higher tier products activity modules in it and be balanced for those modules. Oh, and he also notes that he put in an additional sulfuric acid train because the previous, because previously one train running over here, when this was running full bore, one train coming over here couldn't keep these tanks full. So there's now a second one as well. Um, good. I guess that's, yeah, we're going to need that to keep up with all of the, uh, all the acid usage, I suppose. Okay, I have been uh, rambling and rambling as, as 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 is my way. It looks like this is going to be another three episode week because um, I, well, I've been I've been t I have been talking for about forty minutes. Although the episode is going to be shorter than that because you know I edit them down a little bit, remove the ums and ers and pauses just to an extent. So I think we're going to be coming back tomorrow to have a look at um, what's been going on with the um, with, with the archospheres up in space. There have been significant improvements over here, and there's, I think there's a fair amount to talk about. So I'll, 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 that'll be uh, another video for tomorrow. We'll uh, so it, once again three videos because I just can't stop talking about things so we'll be back tomorrow for that and then on Monday we'll be back for another stream where we shall where we shall uh, have another uh, stab at declogging that um, this, this junk belt over here which is still flowing madly along here we still haven't got rid of everything um, but it's I'm sure it's getting better but it just needs a bit more um, it just needs a bit more should we say to, uh, to, 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 to fill everything up uh, so we'll be sorting that one out then I'll be back on Wednesday when I should be carrying on with satisfactory uh, last week I managed to get both aluminium and quartz up and running and onto my train system so I guess this week I'll be trying to do something with those and hopefully that'll allow me to leap forward and make all kinds of new exciting um, developments and, and keep the space elevator happy. On Thursday, the video about how Mark's spaceships work will be released uh, to the to the general public. It's already out for supporters, so uh, check it out if you if you uh, if you are a supporter and you haven't done already. And then at the weekend, there'll be a couple, maybe three of these videos uh, going over everything that happened in the last stream. So, as ever, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.